Welcome to the Irish Farmers Journal Weekly Podcast, brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy. Hello, Patrick Dunno here, news editor with the Irish Farmers Journal. The National Ploughing Championship gets the headlines every year, but for dairy farmers, the Moor Park Open Day is the only show in town. Farmers from all over the country converge in Chagas' research farm in County Cork on Wednesday to learn more about the latest milk production techniques. Let's hear from the Irish Farmers Journal's Ashley Hussey in Moor Park. First she spoke to our dairy specialist Aidan Brennan and then to a few participants around the grounds. Aidan, could you tell me a little bit about the Moor Park event and why it's so important to dairy farmers? Yeah, Ashley, this, this is a big event on the, the dairy farmers calendar. It's on every two years. Uh, today, this year is a special year, I suppose, in the sense that quotas are gone. So it's the first event in, in over 30 years at Moor Park in a quota-free environment. So there's a massive crowd here today. I'm looking around me and there's probably the bones of 10,000 people um, dotted around the, 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 the massive fields in, in Moor Park. I suppose the key messages from the event are, you know, we have to be sustainable in our any expansion that goes on. Uh, it has to be profit-focused. We need to become more efficient within our own farms before we expand any more. And uh, I suppose those are the key, the key messages I've seen in the stands that I've been on. And milk prices at the moment, that's a big concern for dairy farmers. Um, what have you heard today about milk prices? Yeah, sure, milk, milk prices are falling. Um, you know, they're between 27 and 28 cents a litre. I know some of the processors are supporting that with their own funds and, and, and maybe bring up to 30 or 30.5 in the Glanbia region. But like, you know, the indications are that milk prices are falling. Regardless of that, you know, we, ha- we have to run lean businesses and, and I think we need to be, you know, lowest cost producers. And for me, that's, you know, achieving high levels of grass intake per cow as opposed to high levels of constant feeding and, and other higher input systems that you could go down. So it's important to keep the message here that we're going to be, we want to be sustainable in both for the environment point of view and also from uh, our financial point of view. And the focus here has to be on producing low cost milk and that's done through good genetics So high fertility breeding, high milk solids breeding, and also a high amount of grass intake per cow. We need to be utilising at least 12 tonnes of grass per hectare. And the mood of dairy farmers at this event, what have you noticed so far? Yeah, I suppose it's it's a strange one. Um, Milk price is is pretty close to the top of people's minds. But it's uh, it's cautious optimism at the same time. I mean, we've been through milk price drops before. And it's a lot harder to come out of that in a quarter year. So we're seeing that, like, okay, we're, we're now in, in the 1st of July. If milk price falls further, you know, we can, we haven't the worry of quota like you had in 2009 or 2012 when milk price fell in those years where you had to dry off cows earlier, you know, in September or go once a day. Now we can go, you can keep milking twice a day. You're going to produce high solids milk. It's going to uh, supplement the, the, the price drop somewhat. People are, you know, obviously disappointed with milk price falling, but at the same time, people who come to this event, they're, they're technically focused, they're focused on their business, they're here looking for solutions to problems. And, you know, generally, there's a good air of optimism that the quotas are gone. And, uh, you know, on a day like today, like the sun is splitting the rocks, as, as we say. So, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to be uh, pessimistic on a day like today. Perfect. Thanks a million, Aidan. Hi, I'm James. I'm from Roscommon. And why are you here today? So I'm here and work with Herdwatcher, basically going around chatting to the lads, kind of seeing what's their uh, use to out getting on the farm and software and kind of their awareness of us. Okay, and what's the mood been around here today? Very positive, everyone's kind of upbeat, but it's good sunny weather, so you kind of expect that. <laughs> and uh, the dairy industry in general, what do you think That's, of at the moment? It's thriving, like it's going, it's, it's just going to kick off, like it's already, it's already in great shape, like and the lads are going to you know, push expansion. We Dales, we crack. My name is Dick Nash, <laughs> Mellow and Castellone Road. And what do you think of the event today? Which is great, and um, the events is in farming, and I suppose to something new now, with quarters gone, and there's opportunities there for youngsters setting out. And where do you see the future of dairy farming going? Milk will put double to my mind anyway, I suppose, from what it was, at least double. Mm-hmm. And I suppose there'll be a lot of young farmers make a nice living out of it now again. A lot of them jumping out now again the next, within the next decade, I suppose. And those that are interested enough to stay in, I suppose they'll do well out of it, you know. We hope that you're enjoying this Irish Farmers Journal podcast, brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy. Find out more at farmersjournal.ie. One thing farmers are certainly discussing in Moor Park was the upcoming TAMS 2 grant scheme for dairy equipment, which will open for applications next week. My colleague on the news desk, Paul Mooney, is joining me now to discuss the details of the scheme. Paul, you're welcome. Thank you, Patrick. 
Who's this scheme for? Patrick, it's for essentially for dairy farmers aged over 40 or any dairy farmer who is established in their own right for more than five years. And the reason I say that is that any younger dairy farmer who is more recently established can apply for much the same items in terms of dairy equipment, but at the higher grant rate of 60% in the Young Farmers Capital Investment Scheme. So this scheme is therefore aimed at the general or the older farmers like myself and uh, farmers who are longer established. And the grant rate? is for the older farmers? Grant rate, Patrick, for this scheme, 40%. Uh, not as good as the 60% for young farmers, but still a fine grant rate, uh, which will help farmers enlarge and um, expand. And what items are covered? Is there anything new or different that was covered in the Young Farmer Scheme times as in the dairy equipment side? Bro- broadly, Patrick, the same list of eligible items. So they're falling under the headings of the milking machine equipment, um, milk storage and cooling equipment, and in-parlour milk feeding systems. It's a lengthy enough list. They're there in Annex A of the terms and conditions of the scheme. Um, but for example, it covers uh, new milking machines, including the replacement of an, an existing milking machine, uh, an expansion of an existing milking machine, and there are two very important items. Uh, it'll cover a rotary milking machine for bigger farmers and a robotic machine for, I suppose, the more forward-looking uh, farmer who wants uh, to get to uh, to do that. Still nothing on, on silage slabs or silage pits, Paul? Certainly not in the dairy equipment scheme, Patrick, um, but remember that there are a number of other TAMS2 grant schemes to open over coming weeks, and one of those will be a general scheme. Uh, you could nearly call it a catch-all scheme, and I certainly don't mean to be denigratory of it in that, but it'll be a scheme for uh, other farmers including dry stock and cattle farmers suckler farmers sheep farmers etc and we're hoping there'll be an equally or even longer list of investment items in that scheme patrick and the farm organizations are lobbying away to get in items such as silage slabs and silage walls tillage farmers they were supposed to kick up the biggest fuss when tams 2 was was initially launched is there anything forthcoming on that side not yet and certainly i was talking to a tillage farmer yesterday and he remains very unhappy uh, that there's nothing in it so so far for them but let's wait and see if anything will get in in this general scheme that I just mentioned there but there's no real indication yet uh, Patrick of anything coming on that if we were betting our five euro we'd, we'd be more confident on the silage slabs and walls than on uh, items such as grain stores Thanks Paul. Thanks Patrick The Irish Farmers Journal Weekly Podcast brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy This week, Irish Country Living is launching a new edition of the FBD Women in Agriculture Awards to recognise the contribution of exceptional women to Irish farming. Country Living's editor, Mairead Lavery, and consumer editor, Kira Leahy, are here to tell us more. It's something we do every two years and we always get a fantastic reaction. As you well know, women pay a huge part on many farms. I mean, some handle the accounts, others run innovative businesses on the farm, others are out there, you know, with their partners or indeed on their own, you know, doing the hard graft out on the farm. And I mean, we sometimes, these women aren't recognised and this is what these awards are about they're about celebrating these women recognising the huge contribution that they play on farms no matter what kind of farming enterprise it is. Well that's certainly an issue over and over again the lack of recognition for women Mm -hmm. in the whole agri-industry what I note about this is that there are three categories to these awards now one of them sounds very interesting it's the Innovation on Farm Award can you tell me more about that? Absolutely so in this category we're looking for women that are farming and I suppose that have gone that one step further with their farms who have successfully implemented, you know, technical or managerial innovations on the family farm. So, I mean, this could be employing new technology to improve the profitability of the farm. It could be, you know, excellent management practices to make the farm as much more efficient. I mean, one of our previous winners was Lisa Keenan and she's running the family farm in Kells County Mead. And what really made her stand out from the crowd was her attention to detail, you know, in developing her suckler herd. And she was also involved um, in running the Kings Court Mart, which was her local mart. You know, we really identified that this is a woman who's really savvy and thinking about the bigger picture. All right. So that's that's the um, Innovation on Farm Award. Now, we know, I mean, the whole food sector is really mm-hmm. growing. Small artisan food products, you know, they're getting onto farmers markets, they're getting out into supermarket shelves. Very many of these businesses are being driven by farm women who are making use of the produce that they, they grow on farm, at adding value. Absolutely. So we're recognising that in the second category. Yeah, absolutely. We're looking for, and I suppose it's not just food businesses. I mean, it could be allotments, it could be a contracting company. It's basically women that have looked at their farm and said, right, what can we do extra to improve the po- profitability with, a, you know, a different innovative kind of business? So it was, you know, identifying a viable market opportunity and really making a success of it. I mean, for example... Um, our other previous winner was Tracy Hamilton. And I mean, they were growing vegetables on their farm for 20 years. Mm. And herself and her husband went, you know what? 
you know, the way people eat, the way people are, you know, preparing their food, it's changing. And this is our opportunity to get on the bandwagon, you know. Mm. So they have developed that into a 13 million euro company. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. And, yeah. It is worth mentioning. It's not just the big players we're looking at. I mean, it, it's anybody that has looked at their farm mm. and said, right, mm. I can make a really good, successful business out of this. Yeah. Valerie Kingston would have been another one absolutely. with the whole Glen Ellen business. Yeah. She was a previous winner. Yeah. And I failed to mention Anne Moore uh, went on to win, who won the um, uh, Innovation on Farm Award. Absolutely. The first one went on to win in Europe as the, 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 the woman in agriculture in Europe. Yeah, and so, I mean, Anne had a very hard story. Her husband was sick and it was Anne that really, you know, stepped up to the, the mark business. and drove the business. Right. Absolutely. Now, the third category here is the Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, you're looking for nominations for this. Yeah, I, I suppose this is a really special award. This is celebrating a woman who's been at the forefront of Irish agriculture and food for most of her life. That has really been, you know, so important in driving changes and making a difference. Mm. I mean, as an example, our previous winners were Myrtle Allen from Ballymaloo and we also had Anna Mae McHugh from the National Ploughing Championships. So, you know, women that have really made a difference mm. over their mm. lifetime. The quality for that will be high, but, you know, if you know someone that you think really should be celebrated for their lifetime contribution to agriculture and food. This is the award for them. Okay. Well, look, at it's, um, it's a great set of awards. It recognises the role that women play mm-hmm. in farming and in the whole area of agribusiness. And, I mean, it's very, very worthwhile. Um, the entry um, details are in this week's Country Living. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the competition, the entries for the competition are open for the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So get your thinking caps on. You can both nominate somebody or people can nominate themselves. Exactly. There's a lot of shy people out there That's who won't exactly put their names it. forward. Yeah. And what we're looking for is their, their relations or their friends or their neighbours to actually say, do you know, that woman is doing a fine job. Absolutely. We will enter her in this competition. I mean, that's it. Like, if you're a mom, like, as you said, people are shy to put in their entries for something like this. So if, you've a, if your mother, your wife, your aunt, your sister is really doing something, I mean, put in an entry mm. and you don't even have to tell her. Wouldn't it be fantastic to get a phone call during the summer say from Irish country living to say you're shortlisted? Oh, exactly. Right. So... And the, these awards then finish up at the Women in Agriculture yeah. Conference. So our Women in Agriculture Conference is on the 29th of October this year. Date officially announced as of now. Um, and we'll be announcing the winners on that date. On that date. And while we're here, one of the previous winners of the Women in Agriculture Awards, Tracy Hamilton of MASH Direct, is being interviewed by Thomas Hubert. Um, Tracy's story is absolutely amazing. Uh, family farm business, growing uh, vegetables for the supermarket trade, margins being really squeezed. How were they going to add value? They thought of a lot of different options and eventually came back to the good old reliables doing something with the vegetables. They've grown that business so substantially, uh, quadrupled, more than quadrupled the amount of land that they're farming, working with other farmers as well. Um, it's a real success story and it's a success story built on adding value to what a farm produces. We're on the bus that MASH Direct uses to promote its product at various shows around the country. Um, Tracy is also a winner of the Family Farming Awards last year for Ulster, and uh, she also got an award for innovation at the Women in Agriculture Awards from the Farmers Journal. Tracy, can you tell us a bit more about your business and how farm-based is it? Oh, very much so. We're from County Down. Uh, we're very much a family business. We started in 2004. And the reason we started was to add value. We were supplying vegetables to the wholesale market and the return was not going to be sustainable for our family farm. And we had to look to see what we were going to do. And Martin, my husband, had been looking at opportunities and he decided what we were going to do is to add value to our raw materials, to our own vegetables, um, to supply the, the retail market. So we took a year in planning, getting the process right. And we literally spent a whole year innovating the product, designing and making our own machinery. We didn't have, obviously, the capital to invest in big, um, heavy machinery. And we had a very innovative director. And we uh, designed and made our own. So that's really how MASH Direct started. And we're now, thankfully, the brand leader throughout the island of Ireland and probably the UK for our vegetable accompaniments. Really, we are doing what people would do at home. We are harvesting, steam cooking and packaging all on the same day. And it's all low salt. We have traffic light coating on the front of our packs. And just the way we're cooking them, the nutrition is maintained. We don't use any artificial additives, preservatives, colorings. It's all as as you would do at home. And I think that's what people want. They want comfort food. 
we've all grown up with mashed potato and mashed turnip and carrot and parsnip and especially the elderly they don't have the energy um, to be able to chop a turnip and this is our way of allowing them to have food that they have been missing and another thing we've done recently in the company is everything we are producing is totally gluten-free we have been asked by so many people at consumer shows who have are celiac or have a gluten intolerance or choose not to eat gluten it's interesting that's coming a big thing now as well and we decided when we were developing our croquette product to make it gluten-free and that was really the turning point for the whole business so it's gluten-free without affecting the quality of the product in any way is it all home farmed or home cooked the majority of the vegetables we do grow ourselves but the size of the company now the response has been so enormous we are now farming 1400 acres ourselves but we do have to outsource we're very lucky that we live in a very good vegetable growing area so we're surrounded by other wonderful farmers with the same farm assurance as ourselves so we are very confident in who we get to support our supply when necessary we also would buy some vegetables from down south it really just depends on the time of year and the sheer demand for our products but definitely the majority is our, still our own farm how difficult is it to do this work to consistent standards to supply supermarkets who always want the same product on the shelf and to achieve that on a small scale as a family business It is very challenging, especially with the climate, you know, the weather we've had very recently. We're thinking, oh my goodness, you know, we couldn't get into the ground. You know, we had such a really good spell of weather and then suddenly the weather changed and then we got that frost. We do have to store the odd time just to keep the continuity because we cannot explain to one of the multiple supermarkets that I'm sorry we don't have enough carrots this week to supply you. We've got to have our products on the shelves all day, every day uh, and totally consistent and consistent quality as well. Do you ever lose sleep over it? Oh, <laughs> many a time. But no, we are very um, proud of what we've achieved and we are very thankful to the consumer in Ireland to have put us in the position that we're in. Word of mouth, as we all know, is the best form of marketing and we've got had, you know, phenomenal response. And the supermarkets in Ireland, likewise, they are very loyal to local producers. They're very proud of what Ireland is producing. And I just think as an island, we don't shout loud enough because we are producing fantastic quality products. How big is uh, Mash Direct and the Hamilton Farm now in terms of the number of people and the financial turnover? We're employing over 150 people. From a standing start, we had about five on the farm when we started in 2004. Our turnover is about 14 million sterling. So it is a phenomenal growth, literally from a standing start. It's been a very, very steep learning curve for all of us. We're very much a family business. Martin, my husband, is a fifth generation farmer. And my background is business studies. And we're very privileged to have both our sons who have chosen to join us. One, Lance read an agri-food business and marketing degree. And Jack, our youngest, did his first degree at Trinity with history and sociology. And then he did a master's in diplomacy. So with a diplomat and a company in the family, which is wonderful, especially for our export. We're very strong in export. So we're actually exporting to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Bahrain. And we're looking at the American market in a very big way at this moment. I was just going to ask you where you go from there. So you go to America and beyond. America and beyond and a greater listing in throughout the UK. We are listed with one of the big four on a, a national level, which is fantastic for us. And we're just hoping that that will stimulate one of the others to press the button. We're supplying them very much in Ireland and in Scotland in a very big way. And it would be lovely to be able to say we're across the whole of the UK. All right. Thank you very much, Tracy, and the best of luck with all that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. The Irish Farmers Journal podcast online at farmersjournal.ie and on iTunes every Thursday. Brought to you by Ornua, the home of Irish dairy.